Tom, let's talk first of all about your old days in music hall. Well, my old days in music hall. Big fun, sir. <laughs> no, I know. As a matter of fact, I'd love to call myself Tommy Trinder Jr., but Sammy Davis thought of it first. I don't know why. I've never heard of a Sammy Davis Sr. I started as a boy. I, I was a boy singer, believe it or not, with this voice of mine. I had a voice like Julie Andrews, only more feminine. And I joined a show called Cases Court. That was a juvenile show that found a lot of wonderful people, including the great Charlie Chaplin. And I joined, it's 61 years ago, it was June the 5th, 1921, I opened at the Palace Oldham. And to start in show business at Oldham, I mean, you've got to like it. And the boy who started with me on the same day was um, Jimmy Wheeler. His name in those days was Jimmy Remnant, that was his real name. And Will Murray, the proprietor, when he first met me and suggested I went on the stage, said, uh, you want to go on the stage? I said, yes, please, sir. He said, well, how long can you go without food? <laughs> and I've proved it since. And my people, who knew nothing at all about show business, my father was a tram driver, my mother was a little worried. There was this 12-year-old going on tour. And she split open the lining of my jacket and put a pound note inside and stitched it up again in case I was ever stuck. Well, I got on the train to go to Oldham and I think the lining was ripped but before, before I ever got the crew. As a matter of fact, I, I, yes, I've just had it mended again. <laughs> I've kept it all the time. Well, then I went from there and I joined an act called uh, Phil Ree Stable Lads. You see, in those days there were lots of boy acts. There was Parks Eaton Boys, the Eight Lancashire Lads, Phil Reeves stable lads and at the age of 14 I went with the troupe and we spent a year with the Folie Bergere in Paris as, as a dancing act. Age 14? 14, yes. And strangely enough, I don't feedback to it a little while ago, I was very proud of my first passport where it's an occupation I have music hall artists and it's only about a year ago I went over to Toronto and there they're computerizing everything. And all the professions have numbers. And when the young girl at immigration looked at my passport, said, what's a music hall artist? So I said, well, work in a music hall. What's a music hall? So then she looked through her book with all the occupations and numbers. She couldn't find a music hall artist. She said, well, I can't find it. I said, well, I'm a pop singer. So, oh, 37. <laughs> so she, in Canada, I'm a pop singer. <laughs> <laughs> Even if the Canadians don't know what Music Hall is, do you think it will ever die? Well, no, you see, really, it's like old-time Music Hall today is rather manufactured because I don't ever remember in 61 years ever working with a chairman in a Music Hall. The last chairman ever in a Music Hall was Barnard's at Chatham and that was then converted into a tea shop. But that was the last music hall in this country ever to have a chairman. It goes way back. But you see, basically, music hall is a variety entertainment. It's a collection of every speciality, different. And what makes me very proud, in the last war, well, I mean, the, the one that finished about, the, they're all last wars. Anyway, in the last war, I was with ENSA. You remember ENSA, Entertainment's National Service Association which I said meant every night something atrocious, or even Naffy stands aghast. <laughs> and the thing that the troops wanted was variety entertainment, and there were not enough variety artists to go around. And I was very proud. I love going to functions where they say decorations will be worn, because the government said anyone 24 hours in a theatre of war was entitled to the campaign medal. Well, I went to... Every theatre of war went France, Belgium, Italy, Egypt, Syria, Palestine, India, Ceylon, Malay States, Java, Sumatra, Burma and Japan. It's not the first time you've said that. It's a routine now, I have to know. Well, these days I get a lot of work, like Burma Star Reunion was only a few weeks ago. Off I go every year. The standard bearers get slower as they walk through the Albert Hall, that's the only difference. And I go to the El Alamein Reunion, I'm a member of the British Legion, and I went, funnily enough, to Japan for the Australians. There weren't enough British troops to justify sending a show out. So the Australians invited me. I went to Japan for them. But uh, it was one of those things. And today, I still go to Belfast. 
and I go to Germany. We've still got a terrific number of troops in Germany, but it's a different army now. You see, you see the lads, directly they finish duty, they wear civvies. And I was into barracks one night, and there's four boys there with their very smart suits, and shoulder-length hair. So I said, you in the army? Of course we're in the army. So what about hair? Can't get that under the hat. Wigs. Because the German girls won't dance with the boys with short back and sides. So they wear wigs. <laughs> and what used to be hallowed ground, the drill square, I mean, if you walked across it even, the RSM would... <laughs> now on a Sunday, you see the boys with their cars washing them down on the drill square. And another thing that shook me at the last El Alamein reunion, which was about three or four weeks ago, I introduced, sitting in the front of the Albert Hall, were six Chelsea pensioners. And I introduced them, a few gags. And as one got up on his arm, he had an airborne uh, badge. And I thought, a Chelsea pensioner. And when you look back, some of them were in the airborne forces. You know, the time marches on. That's like me now, I have to change the... I don't change the jokes, I change the names to save embarrassment. Like what was Disraeli, I now say Mrs Thatcher. But you still use the same jokes. Who are you embarrassing, Mrs Thatcher or Disraeli? <laughs> Disraeli, I think. <laughs> You've also <coughs> had dealings with um, the American royal family, as it were, their, their first lady and sir. Uh, tell me how you... you Not the first lady, although just the oh. first gentleman. No, what happened... It only happened a few months ago. I, instead of this summer season, strangely enough, I was booked to go to Miami, to the Marco Polo Hotel, where they'd opened an English room, uh, serving English food and uh, English artists. Well, I had a note from Matt Munro, who'd gone there, to say, I understand you're coming to the Marco Polo Hotel. Be very careful. Business is dreadful. So much so that I'm leaving, and I'm going to Nashville to make records. Now, I've got a contract, it's all confirmed, but then I get a letter from the Marco, Ho the Marco Polo Hotel in Miami. Would I go to the American Embassy to get a work permit? Well, this is not my job. This is the liability of the people employer. But I don't want to put any obstacles in the way. I thought, no, they're trying to get out the contract. So if I go to the American Embassy and walk up the staircase, walk in and said I was after a a work permit, I was going to the Marco Polo Hotel in Miami. And the young man behind the desk said, have you got any press notices? Mm. Well, I said, no, I never keep press notices. I don't think I've ever had a good one, really. I mean, you don't keep the bad ones. So, well, you got any playbills or any advertisements? What for? He said, to prove your bona fides as a performer. Well, after 61 years on the stage, including seven years at the London Palladium, where I was full top of the bill, this rather disturbed me. And I said, well, if you like to get in touch with a lot of Americans, I mean, there's Bob Hope, there's Frank Sinatra, there's Danny Kaye, there's Sammy Davis Jr. I've worked with all of them. I'd like to get in touch with them. And there's another young man. I made a film with him. I was the star of the film, and he had a small part. I don't know what he's doing now, but you'll probably be able to, be able to trace him. A man called Ronald Reagan. <laughs> I got thrown out the American Embassy. <laughs> they thought I was being facetious. But I was being honest. 